Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. I've got a in the news segment for you today. Got a bunch of companies to talk about that had news out. And um, why don't I share the screen here and uh, get started out with the biggest company? Uh, that big company that had news out was Newmont and Newcrest. Uh, they were going through somewhat of a um, um, hostile offer, if you will, uh, for takeover. But uh, on May the 14th, so yesterday, uh, Newmont enters into a definitive agreement to acquire Newcrest. Uh, they've ag agreed to acquire by way of an um, Australian scheme of arrangement. Newmont will acquire 100% of Newcrest. Uh, shareholders in Newcrest get 0 0.40 of a Newmont share for each Newcrest share and a special dividend of up to $1.10 paid by Rep, uh, Newcrest. Uh, further strengthens Newmont's position as a responsible gold mining leader through the combination of high quality operations. Completely complementary business creates substantial opportunities for optimization, uh, estimated annual pre-tax synergies of 500 million, uh, expected to be achieved within first 24 months, highly accretive for Newmont shareholders upon closing with opportunity to enhance near-term cash flows targeting at least 2 billion in the first two years after closing through portfolio optimization, uh, maintaining Newmont's balanced capital allocation priorities and industry-leading dividend framework, which has returned over 4.5 million uh, billion, sorry, to shareholders since established in October 2020, um, a, uh, a unanimously recommended by the board of directors of uh, Newcrest. Subject to no superior proposal emerging from Newcrest for Newcrest, uh, and uh, the Board of Newnamont unanimously recommends transaction is subject to customary uh, closing requirements. So, this is a big deal, obviously. I'm gonna make Newmont an even bigger mining company than they are. Uh, for the industry, I don't think it's great news because Newcrest had a kind of a specialty in that they um, did a lot of underground mining of high-grade gold. And so they could be a potential buyer of smaller companies that have excellent underground um, mines out there, either in the exploration or the development stage. And so it kind of takes, well, it doesn't kind of, it does take a buyer out of the market uh, that, you know, looks at those kind of projects. Now, Newmont being so big, um, you know, they're probably not going to look at similar type assets as Newcrest would have. Um, so on the positive uh, for the industry, this is another uh, more consolidation at the early stages of a bull market. Uh, in gold that I think is uh, is going to be a long-term bull market for gold and for silver and for copper and for other uh, minerals. Um, a lot of that has to do with the uh, supply chains being weak, demand being strong. Uh, when it comes to gold, you've got a lot of factors, the banking crisis, the the uh, global currency wars that are ongoing, the buying by the central banks, the Federal Reserve needing to stop raising interest rates, which will put pressure on the uh, U.S. dollar and, um, and something that's not as well talked about, but is the commercial real estate problem in the United States. So there's a lot of reasons to own gold. Uh, and Newmont obviously believes that they want to be a bigger gold mining company by acquiring Newcrest. So that was the biggest news, big news come from the big companies. Uh, a news release that I've been really paying attention to lately is Silvercrest. Uh, uh, four days ago, they announced their quarterly report. And um, some of the highlights are that they... Uh, 
They sold 14,000 ounces of gold, 1.36 million ounces of silver. Um, they used the, the price that they sold was 1,879 per ounce of gold and $23 per ounce of silver. Uh, I would add that um, the price of gold and silver are significantly higher than that now. Uh, so that's going to help out their current quarter. They had revenue of 58 million. Uh, and cost of sales of 22.4, uh, so, so resulting in operating income of 35 million. Uh, they had a all cash cost of six dollars and fifty cents, fifty seven cents a silver equivalent ounce. But the all in sustaining cost, which is the one I pay the most attention to, was eleven dollars and forty five cents an ounce. Uh, for the silver equivalent ounces. So, you know, th this is uh, at 25 bucks an ounce. Uh, um, <laughs> they're making a very healthy um, free cash flow. And because of that, they were able to pre um, repay their uh, debt, 25 million in debt. They've now paid down 95% of the money that they needed to uh, bring this project into production. Uh, it's a real cash making machine uh, and it's an epithermal vein mine and I have several epithermal vein companies that I uh, pay attention to. One of them is the company we're on the CEO, which is Advanced Lithium. We in fact own 55 square kilometers right next door to Silvercrest's Las Chispas mine. And, uh, you know, I've said before, a good place to look for a... Uh, uh, for a cash making machine of a mine is right next door to a cash making machine of a mine. Uh, but the big thing with these um, epithermal veins is when you cut into the uh, bonanza grade zone or the, the boiling zone of an epithermal vein system, that's where you find this kind of rock that is just spectacular to mine makes them one of the lowest cost producers of uh, silver in the business. Uh, and low cost producers tend to uh, get the best premium uh, when the market is strong. And therefore, I think that Silvercrest is the kind of uh, uh, company that is good for uh, investors that want exposure to a silver and gold producer. Uh, and um, and I think it's the kind that can significantly outperform its peers uh, due to these exceptional um, economics of what they're mining. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Silvercrest, I think, is a, a core holding for investors that want to, sil want to be exposed to silver and gold, but with less risk. Uh, I still believe that they can be a, a exceptional outperformer of their mining peers. Uh, and so for the less risky investor, uh, Silvercrest uh, fits the bill. All righty, now I'm gonna move over to Athena Gold. And earlier today, Athena Gold announced that they um, uh, their 2023 exploration plans for their flagship Excelsior Springs project in uh, Nevada. Um, and uh, in it, their initial 2023 RC drill program of 1500 meters will be focused on expanding the newly discovered shallow high grade oxide gold in the western slope zone with uh, 30 meter in inter incremental step outs on the indicated strike both east and west. Uh, these angles hold will be drilled due south parallel with the discovery uh, hole DB23. So as you can see here, the DB22, 23, and 21, uh, they drilled three holes. And this got me really excited and why I uh, asked them to be a sponsor of my reports and they graciously accepted. Uh, and uh, we've had a couple of interviews about it because uh, they, they uh, look at some of the numbers. 23 intersected 33 meters inter of five grams of gold, 5.15 grams of gold, 8.9 grams of silver, including 16.7 meters of 10.03 grams per ton gold and 17.3 grams per ton of silver. 
and a 10.6 meter intercept of 15.3 grams per ton of gold and 26.5. Zero one intersected uh, six grams and 17, uh, six grams of gold over 27 meters, starting at 39 meters, including 10 grams of silver and uh, and 30 grams of, uh, uh, one had 30 grams, one had 10 of silver. Uh, DH2202 intercepted uh, 4.49 grams of gold, 27 uh, grams of silver. So why these numbers, I call them bonanza grades. And, you know, usually when you're looking at bonanza grades, you're talking about, you know, an ounce, two ounces per ton of gold. But that's in an underground project. This is an oxide project, so something you would go after with an open pit. And those kind of mines are mining a half a gram per ton of gold these days. So when you get up into those multi, uh, several grams, five grams, 15 grams, 10 grams, six grams, 4.49 grams of gold, this is quite spectacular numbers for an oxide deposit. OK, so here you can see where those intersections, how they're lining up. Um, here you've got uh, the intersections with the high grade gold. OK, and this one had two uh, separate intersections of the high grade gold. Now, um, they also uh, there's a quote in this news release from John Power, who's the president and CEO, and he commented, and I quote, our 2023 program is intended to better delineate and expand the known mineralization along strike at the Western Slope Zone and further substantiate the project as a regional scale intrusive related gold bearing hydrothermal system. We also hope to further understand the geology and structure of the multiple large flat plung plunging chutes of oxidized gold mineralization encountered in our 2022 programs. So this is some very important, this is an excellent project that I think, uh, you know, you look at the valuation of the company well under $10 million. And um, the, uh, I don't think the market really understands how significant it, it is to find this high grade oxide gold starting very close to surface. Again, something that uh, um, you know has the potential of being a um, uh, something you could open pit, and I think you can't really see it on this map, um, but there is a key structures that go east to west to the south of this area and to the north of the area, and inside of that there's this huge area of of um, uh, alteration. And why that alteration is important is when the rock, when the fluids that carry the gold interact with the country rock, it it alters that chemically alters that rock, and so you get these oxidized areas. They got a big area of oxidization, or I mean, alteration. Sorry, and um, being in between these two structures contained in there. Um, is a very exciting thing that suggests that this is a big system and uh, they're just getting a few holes into it. And as you can see, these blue ones here are the planned holes. So they're going to be significantly stepping out from what they hit in these three red holes here uh, with their new blue holes. Um, so and as you can see, there's a road going right through. So really good access. Alrighty, so that's the uh, Athena Gold story. Um, Massivo Silver uh, uh, is another sponsor of my shows. Uh, they announced that they'll be resuming drilling operations at their Boston Mine Project in the state of Na Nevada, where they have successfully completed their first drill hole targeting and encountering two projected parallel mineralized zones where significant copper gold silver values related to scon mineralization with strong calc silicate alteration along with locally pervasive copper, copper sulfide mineralization were encountered. Uh, Brian Brewer, who's the qualified person for 
Ms. Siebel stated, I am excited to resume drilling and keep complete this first phase drill program comprised of 10 holes. This will give us great insights to the mineralized structures that has a strike length of 7.5 kilometers and previously returned high grade production. Extreme, high, end quote. <laughs> this is me saying uh, it actually was quite extreme high grade gold production, uh, high grade production in the past uh, around the Second World War. Now, Brian Brewer is a very talented geologist. He was part of the Mine Finders team that made a big discovery and ultimately were bought out. Uh, and uh, so he knows what it's like to make uh, new discoveries. And uh, I think that, you know, that they've got something very exciting here. Again, this is a sub $10 million valuation company. Um, and um, I'm seeing that, uh, that there's a lot of very cheap valuation companies out there in the gold exploration space and copper, silver, other uh, metals as well. And I think that's sort of indicative of being in the early days of a, of a metals bull market. Nobody really believes it. Um, and uh, I think that the believers are going to be uh, not too far down the road. So uh, have a look at uh, the interview uh, I did. You go to my YouTube channel at Rocks and Stocks News and uh, you'll find the interview that I did with Brian Brewer uh, and um, and uh, you and David Coburn, and you'll learn a lot about the thinking of an exploration geologist and understanding the 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 size potential of what they have. I, I really don't think that that's well understood, but I tried my best in the interviews, as did Brian, and so check that uh, recent interview that we did on a YouTube channel, and um, I think you'll understand why I'm very uh, excited about the prospects of Massivo Silver. Alrighty, um, here's one. VR Resources strengthens its board, corporate compliance advisors as two, 2023 exploration get underway at its Northway and Hecla Kilmer properties. Why I'm really excited about what they have at Northway is because it looks like they've got a brand new Kimberlite discovery. These are what uh, host diamond deposits. Um, and uh, there hasn't been a lot of that success, uh, exploration success in Canada in quite some time and actually worldwide. And so there's not a lot of interest in diamond exploration right now, but I spent a good chunk of my career in diamond exploration. And um, uh, so I, I, you know, I have a uh, affinity towards it. And these guys look like they ha could have not only one, but maybe multiple Kimberlite deposits in their, um, uh, on their ground in Northern Ontario. And uh, they've already clipped the side of a Kimberlite and now they're going in to cut right across that Kimberlite. Now, the, in this news release, they announced that uh, they have Kevin Keevy as their technical advisor. Um, they really are in great hands with Kevin. I've known Kevin for over a couple decades. Kevin is an extremely talented diamond exploration expert. Um, he was part of the um, Diavec team. They found a bunch of kimberlites up in the Northwest Territories. Um, really a brilliant guy when it comes to diamond exploration. So with Kevin, you know, watching out over the drilling, uh, they've got a great guy involved there. And that's important in diamond exploration because, um, you know, diamonds are a small part of the overall mining world. And there's not a tremendous amount of experts out there. And uh, Kevin Keevy is definitely one of them. So they've got this new uh, drilling that's about to get underway. Uh, and uh, I'm very optimistic about it. And uh, I think I'll be keeping, keeping folks aware of what they're doing with their diamond exploration at VR Resources. Okay, um, Canadian Gold Corp had some news out uh, last week 
And I've really been pouring over this news release because I'm seeing a lot of really spectacular things. The two deepest holes drilled in 2021. Okay, so how this works is Canadian Gold Corp used to be Satori Resources. And, uh, and Rob McEwen had a private company called Apollo, and they merged the two of them together. And they brought in Ian Ball to run the company. So you've got Rob McEwen involved, you've got Ian Ball involved. They both had great success with Gold Corp. And um, I'm seeing some similarities to what Gold Corp had uh, that has me quite excited. It, um, Gold Corp had in Red Lake a tremendously high grade uh, mine. It was very low cost and was a cash making machine. And uh, it, when, when they were running the company, it was one of the best performing gold mining stocks in the entire business. And so now they're they're sort now they've got a new venture and they've renamed the company Canadian Gold Corp. And the key program to begin is at the Tartan Mine Main uh, project where they want to extend the high grade gold at depth and property wide exploration potential. The, the, so um, some of the highlights of this Tartan Mine project is. Back in 2021, it intersected 23.8 grams of gold over 12.6 meters. That makes for about a 250 metal factor when you uh, look at the gram meters, uh, exceptional stuff. I mean, companies are happy if they get oh, uh, around 100. Uh, so when you get into the 250-ish, uh, 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 that's pretty good stuff. It also had 47.6 grams per ton of gold over 4.8 meters, 9.73 grams over 4.1. Um, they wanted, they talked about advanced exploration targets near the mine's infrastructure. Uh, to th back in 2003 to 2005, this project had a 39 gram per ton gold hit over 0.85 meters. 11.3 grams per ton of gold over 2.7 meters. And they've also got, that came through the Apollo side of the company, uh, Rob McEwen's private company, uh, was this Hammond Reef, Reef North and South project and the He's project in the Hemlo area. Okay, so first of all, uh, as you, it, what I see in this cross section that I wanted to point out is, so here's your underground mining workings. And as you can see from this underground mining workings is exceptional continuity of the high grade, all right? Uh, and the deepest drilling that went into their resource limit was down here at about 600, around 600 meters. But as you can see, they, you go below that resource, you get seven grams of gold over five meters, 23.8 grams of gold over 12.6 meters. That's just some very thick intersection of uh, high grade gold and 9.7 grams per ton of gold over four meters. And as you can see here, they this is open. So it, it looks like you've got your direction here of the ongoing uh, the continuity of the high grade, and it continues. And this is the 2023 phase one drill target area. So they're going right after this depth potential. And what I see in this system is it looks like an orogenic gold system to me, uh, just like at the Red Lake mine. And um, these things can go very, very deep, several thousand meters. And as you get deeper, you get closer to the heat engine of the system and, uh, and you get into even higher grade. So uh, this is a very exciting project. As you can see here, they're tightening in this, uh, the, the image of that where they're, gonna, they're going to drill. Uh, this. They had an incompleted hole that they want to extend, but I'm very excited. I, in fact, I think that as you get down here, that there's the potential that this zone is opening up and getting even bigger than what they had up here. 
and a much bigger inter, uh, portion of it is that banana, very high grade gold. Okay, um, they talk about the Tartan project. Uh, and here is, as you can see here, this is a pretty, um, these are all faults. And these faults are very important in orogenic gold systems because they're the cracks in the earth that allow those fluids that carry the gold to make their way up to surface. And what you see here is a pretty complex area of fault faulting. And that's really important as well because that's the nature of orogenic gold systems is that you have primary faults and secondary faults. And oftentimes it's the secondary faults that are the most important. Um, so they've got the, all the elements of an orogenic gold system that is quite exciting. Uh, here's where they're going to be drilling, um, um, doing more uh, of the south zone. This is the main zone that they have highlighted earlier. Um, then they've got a bunch of regional targets that they're gonna they're gonna go after the Hammond Reef north south. They he did a little update in there that they're getting ready to get that drill ready. Um, and also their HES project, which is in the Hemlo area. Um, and um, this one this stood out to me. Um, Limited surface exploration conducted in 2022 indicated historical placer, placer mining on the property, which coincidentally is the same evidence led to the discovery of the Hemlo, of gold at Hemlo. Um, so uh, they're getting off to a pretty good start there, but this is the project that really excites me because they're going to get the, more, the soonest drilling to it and uh, go after this real high grade stuff. So um, that's the uh, Canadian Gold Corp uh, recent news that I wanted to get into a little bit more today. So as always, my shows are for information purposes only. It's important for you to speak with your financial advisors before making any investment decision and also do your homework. A uh, great place to do that homework is uh, I've interviewed a bunch of the management of these companies I talked about today, excluding uh, Newmont and uh, Silvercrest. Never interviewed them. Would like to, especially the Silvercrest guys, uh, but haven't been successful in getting them on the shows. Uh, the other companies I have, and you can find those on my YouTube channel at Rocks and Stocks News or on my substack at rocksandstocks.substack.com. Then go check out their websites, look at their news releases and their corporate presentations, and that'll help you do your homework. On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.